the, the past quiz. Did you have any trouble answering it? Uh, really, no. No? Uh, no. So what, good. what did you get? Sorry? What was your score? Um, about eight. Sorry. Oh, really? Okay, that's a good yeah. one. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good score. Congratulations. All right. So now today we're going to talk about uh, unit number two, which is companies. And um, for this reason, um, I want to share a little bit about, uh, about my company. I have a company. Um, they say that if you are good at something, don't do it for free. And in my case, I love translation. And I have a good friend of mine. Uh, he and I, we started a company. Uh, let me share the screen with you so you can see um, what I am talking about. The name of, of my company or of our company, it's called Moliere. Okay, where is it? Right here. Um, share screen. There. Okay, that's my company, the name of my company. And here in this company, what we do is some translation. We do translations for companies, for huge companies, when they want to translate their contracts for their employees or for their suppliers. And um, um, we started this company uh, five years ago five years ago, and we have been working with a lot of companies. And this is what we do. Basically, this is not a promo of my own company. What I want to share with you guys is that if you are good at something, if there is something that you can do very well, you can start your own company and start um, feeling happy about the services or products that you offer. I don't know about you, but have you ever thought about having your own company? What about you, Braulio Giovanni? Have you ever thought about uh, having your own company? Um, yes, teacher. Since really? I I enter here in, in this career, okay. I thought awesome. about uh, have a company. Okay. What kind of company? What kind of products or services would you offer, Braulio? Uh, I'm not sure uh, about it because I have many ideas. <laughs> All right. Uh, for example, I would like to design an application, an app, an app? about services for uh, the parents who have uh, little babies okay. and they need some help about information or maybe, um, I don't know, tools that they can use for uh -huh. um, their children. And the other idea is to create a, a restaurant in my city. Okay. Of um, Italian food uh -huh. because in, where I am from, uh, there are no. So I think it's a good idea. All right. It's basically two two different ideas, and I like them both. I I think they are both uh, good uh, services that you can provide. Uh, what about you, Gonzalo? Do you have any ideas in mind? Uh, yes. Um, I would like to have my own company about private security. Private security. All right. Yeah. I, I never heard about that before. Tell <laughs> us a little bit. Why are you interested in private security? Well, I, I think uh, security is one of the most important things in the world. And yeah. everybody needs to be safe in their house, in their home, and the work. Uh -huh. So I think it's something that... Um, Everybody needs so. All right, Gonzalo. And did you have this idea in your mind, like, sing, like for a long time, or, or is it just something recent? Or why or who invited you to think about this uh, security um, business? Well, I live I live in Salamanca, Guanajuato. All right. It's, it's okay. Very, it's very dangerous. <laughs> Okay, that um, explains why, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Don't come, please. <laughs> All right. It's not good. Uh -huh. um, but I always, well, I was thinking about it uh, a long time ago uh -huh. since I was into, into high school. Yeah. And I decided to, to well, I, well, I was thinking about make something about it. 
because in my house I have some cameras, security cameras. Uh -huh. I mean, we have a, a, a service uh -huh. and I want to have mine and something, make something different. Okay. Like, I don't know, have security for each, como se dice, como secciones de la ciudad, no sé. Like quadrants or something, like uh, uh -huh. sections, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. the people can pay for it and yeah. they're going to be secure in some, oh, some places. Oh, I see. I see. That's a great idea. All right. Don't tell me more. Why? Because uh, in, in two more lessons, you're going to create a business plan and I'm going to tell you the details, how you can start your, your idea and make it a reality. All right. But sounds, sounds great. Good idea, yeah. Gonzalo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank now, you. Um, I'm pretty sure that People who are connected today or who are going to be watching this video later on YouTube, uh, you have an idea of something uh, that you want to start. Uh, well, what I, what I want to share with you or what I can share with you is that um, having your own company has a lot of advantages. Of course, there are disadvantages. And one of the advantages that I see is that basically, and probably everybody is going to tell you this, that you are your own boss. And this can be a good or a, or a bad thing, because why? Well, usually um, your time uh, can be very restricted or limited to whatever the customer wants. Sometimes if you want to start a restaurant, you need to work really hard, not only eight hours, not only from nine to five, but you need to invest a lot of money if you want your company to be successful. All right. Now, let me ask Carolina, Carolina, Andrea Carolina, who just uh, recently um, uh, showed up. Carolina, um, what other advantages do you think that are there when you start your own company besides being your own boss? Um, well, I think that uh, you, you do uh, the things what like um your own ideas all right definitely definitely you are the boss so basically you decide what goes or what doesn't go right yes. basically you make the decisions okay thank you thank you andrea now on this lesson lesson number five let me let me um share it with you guys uh right there Lesson number five. Can you see it on your screen? I'm just opening it up. Companies. Can you see it now? Yes. All right, good. Yes. Okay. So here on this section right here, I'm going to go really quick, right? Because uh, I have, um, we have an exercise which is complicated and I want to share a tool with you that is going to help you to figure uh, the, the, um, the problems out. So here, I want you to do a really quick search and find the definition of company, all right? What is a company? And here, you're going to write the sources of information. Obviously, we know that in Spanish, company means compañía. But what I want you to do is tell me the definition in English, all right? Let me move on really quick to the next exercise, 2.2. Company types and structures. On exercise 2.2.1, it says there are two main types of companies, public sector companies, okay, which are state-owned businesses and private sector companies. In Mexico, which are public sector companies and which are private sector ones? Use the two different colors to tell me which is which. You can Google, uh, you can use Google to find the answers. All right. Let's do one example so you can have a better idea. The post office, is this a public company or is this a private company? Or it can be both. It's both. It's both. All right. Okay. Uh, so two people spoke at the same time, but I could hear, I could understand. Carla said it's public, right? And Silvana said uh, both. Am I right? Yes. All right. Okay. Now, uh, you can you can say that you can say that it's public, that it's private, or that it's both. 
and you are going to give me one example or two examples. Carla, can you give me one example? Because you said that it's public. It's because, uh, I <laughs> sorry teacher, mm -hmm. I can speak in English. All right, let's, let's move uh, to Silvana. All right, Silvana, uh, can you give us uh, an example? Please. Yes, teacher. Um, for example, and we when we were, when we bought something um, in Mercado Libre, all right. Uh, they have like their um, their office, and we don't we don't uh, select what from we. Ah, sorry. When, <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. We don't select uh, when we want to receive the 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 object that, that we wrote, for example. And when we want to, I don't know, to send something for papers or or something like that, uh, we we select, for example, um estafeta, okay. we select for example, DHL, and I think that yeah. those are like private and mm -hmm. Something like that. All right, thank you. Now, thank you for sharing your answer, Silvana. So let me just uh, reinforce what you said. So Silvana said that um, Estafeta or DHL or UPS, uh, those are private companies. They are called private because they are owned by you know private people, private persons. Sometimes it can be a family that owns the business. However, there is another one, and maybe that's the one that Carla was thinking of, which is CEPOMEX or Servicio Postal Mexicano. All right. Um, what do you know about CEPOMEX or, or Correos de Mexico? Correos de Mexico, is it a private company? What do you say? I think it's public, but I'm, I'm not sure. It is public, Braulio. Uh, Correos de Mexico, it's public. So what is the difference between a public company and a private company? Well, a public receives money from the government to exist, all right? Let me repeat this idea. A public company is one that receives money from the government to exist. And here, in this case, uh, CEPOMEX or Correos de Mexico, it's public because it receives federal funding. And um, Estafeta or DHL, it's private. You know, it's owned by um, a group of people or a person. All right. Um, now, here's a, a tricky question, another one. Railways. Railways. Do you guys know what railways mean? In Spanish, Carla, is your opportunity to talk in Spanish? Uh, in this case, railways, it refers to the general infrastructure, which is uh, ferrocarriles, all right? Okay. Ferrocarriles. So ferrocarriles, are they Mexican? Are they public? Are they private? What do you guys think? You can Google your answer, of course. I'll wait. Are you Googling your answer? Yes, teacher, it is uh, private. It is private, right? Thank you. Thank you, Carla, for... Um, for your effort, all right? Uh, now, it's private, okay? And you probably thought like, really, is it private? Uh, yeah, it is private. And can you, did you find um, an example, Carla? Like for example, for the post office, we mentioned Estafeta, we mentioned um, uh, DHL, we mentioned uh, Cepomex. What about, um, uh, what about uh, the railways? Did you find an example? It, uh, an example is Ferromex. 
No, yeah, that's right. It's Ferromex. And probably we think that Ferromex is Mexican because the name is Ferrocarriles Mexicanos. However, there is a concession that it was given so, to some private investors. And that's why they have this company, okay? They, they own this uh, concession for over a hundred years. So we all are gonna be dead and the concession is going to get back to Mexico and I mean, we're not going to see it, okay? Now, um, I want you to do the same for the next items, television, water, energy, telecoms, banks, newspaper, airlines, roads, and mining. Do you guys know the meaning of, um, let me see which is difficult, telecoms. Do you guys know what does it refer about? The telecoms? It's kind of easy, right? I mean, telecoms, it's similar to Spanish, right? Are the telegraphs? Mm, telecomunicaciones. Mm -hmm. Telecomunicaciones. Okay. All right. What about the last one? What about this word right here? Mining. Do you know the translation in Spanish? Minería. Minería. Thank you, Gonzalo. Minería. Okay. Now, I want you to Google the answers here. All right. For television, water, energy, telecoms, banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Let's move on to the next exercise. Two point two point two. Within the private sector, there are different subtypes of companies. Match the different types in the box with the definitions below. Here you have private company, corporation, sole proprietor, and partnership. So here you're going to use these um, terms and write them here in these blank spaces. Here it's a definition for these different types of companies, okay? So today you're going to learn the difference between private and public company. And also you are going to learn the difference of a public sector company that is funded by the government. And also there are public companies that are not funded by the company. What is the difference? Let me tell you uh, an example that everybody knows in this, in this room. Um, what about Netflix? Is it a public company or a private company? Any ideas? You can Google the answer, of course. Let me open a web page while you Google the answer. Let me repeat the question. Is Google a private company or a public company? Is private? It is. Ah, uh, sorry. That is not correct, Carla. Thank you for trying. And of course, if it's not private, it's a public company. And you're thinking like, what? Does it receive money from the federal government? Or why? Why is it public company? Any ideas? Let me it's because that. everybody can have access to that uh, platform. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Silvana. It is called a public company because everybody here can buy a share, right? A share, what is a share? Well, a share, it's a piece of cake, right? A piece of cake of that company. That company, in this case, Netflix, they need your money to continue investing it on creating more series or paying the lease for more uh, movies, right? So they need your money. And if you lend them your money, if you invest your money with them, well, what they are going to do is that they are going to make a profit. And with this profit, of course, everybody wins, right? So if the company does well, you're going to do well too. 
And if the company goes, you know, you know, takes bad, bad decisions, of course, your money is going to suffer. Now, where can you buy shares of Netflix? Any ideas? Where can you buy pieces of cake of Netflix? If you want to invest your money with Netflix, one way to do this is by investing on probably the most popular one that we know it's uh, GBM. Let me open that uh, for you, all right? The name is GBM. Here in this, uh, in this webpage, you can create your account and you can start buying shares from Netflix, right? Of course, you need to have a lot of money to buy a share from Netflix. And you think like, well, I am not rich, so I cannot buy uh, a share from Netflix. Well, I understand that, but you can buy pieces of a share. So if you want to learn more about trading, I recommend you to start by checking this, um, this website, GBM. And you can start, uh, buying uh, shares that are less expensive usually cost like 15 pesos, one five, 15. All right. So that's an idea. All right. Now, here, let me go back to um, here. Okay. Vocabulary exercise 2.2.3. In vocabulary uh, about companies, it, it can be like super, super, super immense, the number of uh, words that we need to memorize. So I thank you today for showing up. And what I want you to do on your free time, I created this um, set of cards on Quizlet. Quizlet is a free tool that you can use to memorize all sorts of things. So not necessarily related to this class, but you can start your account and create your own set of words of or new vocabulary or new concepts that you want to memorize. So basically Quizlet helps you to create um, digital cards. Um, remember those cards that we used to use uh, made of paper in the, in the past that we used to have. And those cards, um, How, how are, are they called in Spanish? Um, oh, I forgot the word in Spanish. It's um, tarjetas. Oh, I forgot the word. But anyway, uh, with Quizlet, you can create uh, terms or concepts that you want to memorize. And also, you can use the application on your phone. It's a free application, and it's going to help you to memorize any concept that you want. So anyway. I created two exercises. The first one, it's huge. It has a lot of uh, a lot of words. It has 105 new terms. Okay, and the second one, it's it has only eight words. So if you are in a hurry, if you don't have a lot of time, then you can try this out. Only eight words for you to memorize. These words are related to companies' vocabulary. So you click on here, let me click on one right there. If you click on this uh, Quizlet, you see that you are going to, um, you are going to find these concepts, okay? It says to found, establish, and set up, all right? Okay. Hmm, something funny going on with my mouse, all right, there, okay, headquarters production plant, assembly line, factory, and, and so on and so on. It's uh, 105 um, uh, words. If you want to study, click on flashcards, all right? And it says here, to bring a company live, it says click the card to see the term, all right? Which is to found, establish, and set up. And this Quizlet, this includes a, a sound. To sound, establish, set up. All right. So it does include the word, the, the pronunciation for the word. Okay. So you repeat the word until you memorize it. Now, 
Let's check the next word. The main office from which the board of directors run the company. Okay, let's flip the card. And that, those are called the headquarters. Okay. Headquarters. All right. Let me try with one more. Okay. A building or a set of buildings with equipment capable of manufacturing goods. All right. So let's see what is the definition? What is the term for that? It's a production plant. So here you can see your progress. So once you have studied the words, let me go back. You can uh, test yourself. You can practice with match exercises or gravity. So when you finish studying uh, your Quizlet words, I want you to take a screenshot and here paste this screenshot in this section right here. All right. Any questions here? No. All no, right. Everything. Okay. Let's move on to the last exercise, okay? Because we are running out of time. We have only eight minutes left. On exercise 2.2.5, there is a, a reading of two paragraphs, okay? And I want to share with you today a, gra a grammar tool that helps me a lot. This grammar tool is called Grammarly, all right? Here, let me create a new document. Mm -hmm. And here on Grammarly, what we're going to do is I am going to copy my, my text right here. Ah, oh, what's going on? Hmm. It's not working. The mouse is acting funny today. All right. Hello. Where a hey, mouse? There you go. All right. Okay. Now I can copy it and now I can paste it on Grammarly. And you see, Grammarly helps me to identify the 12 mistakes that I'm talking about. All right. So let me show you here the word 90s. What does it say? It says, ah, uh, 90s, it says, the correct word is 90s without the H. All right, there you go. The correct word is not cultural. The correct word is culture. Then, okay, it's telling me that the word really is not necessary. And I decide if I want to follow the advice of the software or not. In this case, I don't want to follow it. So what I'm going to do, I am going to click on the garbage, uh, the trash can, and it says dismiss. All right. And then I'm going to move out from change to change. You see how easy it is uh, to detect the mistakes? Do you guys, uh, have you guys heard about this before? Let me, let me write it here on, um, on the chat. Grammarly.com. That's the name of the application. All right. And it's going to help you to find all your mistakes. Okay. Of course, this is not perfect. Why not? Well, because it's a bot that is programmed to um, correct your mistakes. And, you know, bots are not humans, of course, and they don't know what you really want to say. So what I would say that it's not 100% accurate, all right? So I am sharing this with you. Why? Because not a lot of people watch these videos. So you're lucky today because if you're watching this video, it means that um, I am sharing my secrets with you guys. What do you think? Do you like this idea, um, Braulio? Yes, I like it a lot because right. well, I I already know it. Uh -huh. um, I watch it in a YouTube app. Yeah, so. it, it, it you know it's everywhere, right? Yes, <laughs> and and yeah, I think it works very well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Who else is here? Andrea, Carolina, did you know about this tool? Um, no. 
All right. Think... Are you going to use it? Maybe. <laughs> All right. They are not paying me. All right. They are not paying me to promote it. Okay. So please, uh, I want you to use this tool. Um, and then you can find all the mistakes here in this text, okay? So some people think like, oh, it's too difficult. Yes, I know it's a difficult exercise, okay? But now you know the secret. The secret is Grammarly. It's going to help you a lot, all right? Are there any questions about uh, this week's homework or any other comments that you have? No, I don't have any. All right, thank you. Thank you for answering, Gonzalo. All right. Carla, are there any other questions that you have? No, teacher. All right, okay. Carla, you need to continue working on your English, all right? Listen to a lot of music to watch TV series in English, of course, all right? Remove the subtitles so you, can go, you are going to uh, learn faster. Okay? Yes, teacher. Good. Silvana, what about you? Are there any more questions or comments that you want to make? No, teacher. Everything is fine. All right, guys. So thank you for showing up today. Uh, I hope you don't have any trouble by answering these uh, questions that I'm making. Um, are the homeworks so far, are they difficult? Are they really hard? How are you feeling? Let me ask this question to Andrea Carolina. How are you feeling with this uh, with this homework, Carolina? Andrea Carolina. Um, are they well, difficult? yeah. Tell me. Be honest. No. No, it's easy. Mm -hmm. They are easy. Are they time consuming? Do they consume a lot of your time? Mm, no. Okay. All right. So, is there anything that you would like to change? All right, it seems that she didn't hear me. All right, guys, uh, thank you for showing up again one more time, and I will see you guys next week. All right, what about uh, next week uh, if we change uh, to another day? Maybe Wednesday. Uh, what day is today? It's Thursday. Wednesday, Wednesday or Monday. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, thank you for showing up today. I will see you next class. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye, thank you. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. See you. Bye, teacher. <laughs>